Let me start by saying big thanks to Lin ITX for sending me this Amplify Alien Router mesh access point. We take a look at one of the best Wi-Fi 6 mesh setups for 2021 so far. In the video, we'll have a look at what comes inside the box of the Amplify Alien Router. We'll see how configurable it is, and we'll then set up the router as standalone and run some speed tests. Once I've done this, I'll add an additional access point to see how much the speeds improve throughout the house. For the test though, I'll be using my iPhone as it's my only Wi-Fi 6 enabled device. If you haven't already, remember to hit the subscribe button, like and comment below if you've enjoyed the video or even if you haven't. Also, let me know if this is something that you would use in your home or setup. If not, what's your best alternative? Let's get to it. I've gone ahead and plugged in my Amplify router. So what I did is I took a ethernet cable from my ISP modem, plugged it into the back of the Amplify Alien, and then I just powered it up. Once you power it up, this is the screen that comes up. So it will tell you to download the Amplify mobile app, which I've already done. And then we can go ahead and get this set up. Here is the app that I downloaded earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and click Amplify. That's going ahead now and looking for the Amplify devices. So we just give that a second. Then you are greeted with this page just here. So the name of your network, you can give it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna call this one inside wire and then you create a password um, I would suggest you make this a little bit more complex but for the purposes of this demo uh, I'm just gonna do password one two three probably one of the most easiest passwords you could crack but um, there we go so underneath that it gives you the option do you want to reuse the same password for the administrator you can either specify something different or which I would probably again suggest you change keep a separate password for the administrative account and then you just click continue. So that goes off and then sets up. So we'll give that a minute. Um, it's gonna go off and verify the internet connectivity. So we'll give that a second. And that literally probably took about 30 seconds, um, if that. So we just click continue. Um, so do you wanna enable remote management? Um, we click enable. So I already have a Ubiquiti account. So I'm gonna sign in with my Ubiquiti account. So let me just quickly sign in. So there we go, it's going ahead and adding Amplify to my account. So then I can, I can remotely administer that. We click continue. And now it's gonna go off and look for the inside, uh, inside wire network. And there we go. I think that took a whole of about four minutes, if that, to get this set up. You can see how quickly this is to set up. So you can give your feedback if you want. I'm just gonna skip that for now. It's now gonna go off and look for firmware updates. So. Currently it's running 3.4.1 and we're gonna to go to 3.6.0. So I haven't actually set up the mesh point yet and as I mentioned earlier, I'm actually gonna run some tests um, at probably the furthest point in my house uh, without, the mesh net, without the additional mesh device. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run a second test with the mesh device to see, obviously I am expecting an increase in speed, but I just wanna see how far the single access, uh, the single router goes first. So let's go ahead and update that. So we're gonna let that install and then by the time we come back and the power of video editing, um, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So there we go, um, that's gone off and updated. It's saying, thank you for choosing Amplify. It's showing some of the updates that have been improved. So we click, got it. So this is the dashboard of the, of the mesh router itself. Uh, let's start down the bottom. So you've got diagnose in the bottom right hand corner. It's showing you everything is okay, other than obviously the mesh point is offline, which we've done deliberately at the moment. It's gonna show you all the devices that are connected to the network. So I'm actually connected on the uh, laptop that I'm recording on. I'm connected via ethernet cable. There's a very interesting thing here, which says uh, you can pause all the internet connection on all devices. So at any point you wish to pause the internet connection, um, you can do that by just tapping that button. Then we have profiles. So we have a quick look at profiles. So let's just call this family. Uh, click continue to add devices. So what this does is it allows you to add quiet times in there. So from Monday to Friday between 9 p.m. at night and 7 a.m. in the morning, um, it blocks any internet connection to those devices. So you can choose that profile. So this is great if you have kids and you want a certain downtime for the, the devices. Um, you can add that just here and then you go to devices and you just tick all the devices that you want to add That's really good for if you have kids or if you actually just generally want no devices on the network at a specific time This is perfect for it, but we'll turn that off for the time being you have guest access So 
at the moment it says the inside wire guest network is inactive you can have a maximum number of users I don't know how high this goes it goes to 10 and then unlimited uh, you can turn around and say I want them on the network for 15 minutes that's all they're allowed and then you click start if you don't want it on timing you can always click always on and that will leave the the guest network always on and then we can just quickly jump into the settings so inside wire guest you can change the SSID if you want uh, you can add security WPA WPA2 uh, there doesn't seem to be an option for WPA3 in this but that's fine you can also choose to hide the SSID and you can choose if you wish to have separate SSIDs for the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz network range. So that's entirely up to you. Uh, select your country and then you go into a bit more technical details in terms of band steering and router steering if you want to turn those on and then we have the advanced settings. I did a video on this last week about configuring the U6LR and optimizing it. Same principles apply so if you want to go ahead and check out that video it's in my playlist and I'll drop a link in the description below as well and that will show you about setting the bandings and how that works and getting the most out of it. For the time being we will leave it all to defaults. If you want to go ahead and share your guest network you can do that from here and you can send that via the means from your mobile device. You can actually use a, a VPN app, um, this is called Teleport and that will allow you to VPN in. So you generate a code this gives you the code and then you can download the app and use it. I'd have to test that to see how that works. I've not actually used this before. Um, but yeah, that's something we can we can might be able to have a look at shortly. Performance, so this is showing your general throughput test at the moment. So I'm just gonna click start test um, just to have a quick look at what's happening. And you can see I'm almost getting 650 megabits per second, which is about right for my ISP. My upload, not so great, it's probably about 40 or 50, there you go. Um, it's not as high, uh, it's just generally the way the the, uh, the ISP runs their settings. Uh, nothing to do with the device itself. So that's the uh, settings from your uh, device. Then we go to system, finally. So this shows you everything that's set up. So it's showing everything is great, wonderful, that's everything you want to see. How many devices are connected to the network, your download and upload speed and you can obviously tap on a device if you want to change any of the settings. In settings you have general, I'm not going to go through all of these but sort of give you a rough idea of what there is. Um, internet, this will show you your WAN details. Uh, it seems that you can actually set up a VLAN ID for your ISP if it's required. There are some that do need it. Um, you can just, at the moment IPv6 is disabled, depends if your ISP supports it, you can use IPv6. You have wireless, so inside here if you want to change your settings, um, as I mentioned earlier WPA2 is the most security, there doesn't seem to be WPA3. Perhaps that might be coming in a later firmware update and just some of the settings I showed you earlier. And then finally you have your LED and LCD screen brightness, so you can turn them up and down. And also if this is in your room you can turn the night mode on so there's a green glow and the screen light that comes from the device you can turn that on and off so that at 10 o'clock at night that kicks in turns off and then turns on again at 8 o'clock in the morning so you have dhcp server this is the range that we have at the moment you can change this to whatever you want um, so it depends on how you want your devices set up. This is how mine is set up at the moment. Port forwarding, so there's no port forwarding rules. I know there's, there's certain things that people want to port forward. You can do that from here. And then you have the information about it. So firmware update, you can go here, it's checking the firmware is up to date. Um, support info and about. On the other side of things, you can actually get this set up via a web browser if you want. So I've gone ahead and grabbed details of the router itself. So I know that's the uh, default gateway. It's telling you to select the device, that's my device, so we click on that. Um, it gets you to type in your password, so again, we kept the password the same as the uh, Wi-Fi password, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's have a quick look at some of the settings that are available on here. So you've got how you want your uh, ISP to connect, whether you have a static IP, PPOE, bridge mode, however you want that set up. At the moment, we have DHCP ID, uh, we are getting the connection details via DHCP. We then have um, IPv6, which we saw within the app, you can enable or disable. Um, bypass DNS cache, so it won't cache anything locally or automatically go to your upstream servers. Automatically backbone band switching. So what this means is your two mesh devices, when they try to talk to each other, if there's a lot of interference, they'll actually try and switch to a different band, so that works perfectly fine. Um, IGMP proxy for IPTV and an ad blocker. So interestingly this actually has an ad blocker built in. If you're going to watch my videos make sure the ad blocker isn't on because that helps me bring you these videos. But 
It'd be interesting to see how that works. Maybe something for another video. Down here, then you have some of the radio settings. I'm not gonna go through all the technical details of these, but the more interesting one that caught my eye is the 802.11k, the neighbor report. So what it, what that I would, I would assume what it does is it scans your um, area to see what you have and uses the more better frequencies. So you can go to system info and see your devices and you can have a look at the topology so this basically shows you how everything is set up finally you have support so if you have any issues you can email them at help um, help at amplify.com or help.amplify.com wherever you want to do whichever way suits you so now what we're going to go ahead and do i'm going to connect to the wireless network from my phone um, we're going to run a test from my desk so the route is actually in the next room so we're going to run a test from the desk and then i'm going to go to the furthest point of my house and give that a go and see how that works. Just to show you, I am connected to the inside inside wire network, and then we're gonna go ahead and run a speed test. So like I said, I'm, I'm right next door to it. Let's see what sort of internet speed I'm getting. Bear in mind, my max out is 650, um, and we're getting 560 megabits per second, and we're getting 40 megabits per second upload. So that's fairly good considering my download speed is 650 and I'm getting 560. Okay, yeah, it's not the maximum, but it's still fairly good from where I'm sat on a Wi-Fi connection. So now I'm going to quickly run to the furthest point in my house and I'll quickly run a test there and see how that works. So this is a speed test I ran at the furthest point of my house. I've not stood there and done this live. This is just a screen recording, but I'm approximately about 20 meters. So the route is on the first floor. Uh, I'm on the ground floor about 20-25 meters away roughly um, going through a few brick walls and stud walls and we're getting about 68 megabits per second some people might think well I'm only getting 68 megabits per second from a 600 uh, 650 download speed however what you've got to realize probably at that sort of distance you might have a phone that you're on which for browsing the internet 68 megabits per second is is perfectly fine. So I ran a test on the other side of the house. Now the results are a little bit skewed. So there is some steel beams in the way, so the results might be a bit skewed. So you can see the connectivity. I was just dropping in and out of connectivity here. So the, it kept dropping between 4G and the Wi-Fi signal. So maybe I took a step a little bit too far, but this dropped out which I sort of expected with there being steel in the way, it does skew your results and um, you don't get the best signal there. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna plug in the mesh access point downstairs and I'm gonna run these two tests again to see how the results come out and how much they differ. So I've gone ahead and plugged in the second access point. So we're gonna get this configured. Now, one thing to note is on the back of the mesh access point or the additional access point, there is an ethernet slot. So if you have a hardwired connection or you have a cable to the other side of the house, your speeds would probably run a little bit quicker. Because at the moment what it is, is you have your main router, it's sending the signal to the mesh access point, and then the mesh access point is sending the signal out. So there'll be a, a very slight delay uh, in terms of your speed or in terms of your connection, but nothing probably noticeable that you'd even know unless I'd just pointed it out to you. You can see while I was talking, it just, the, the mesh signal is perfect. It just connected itself automatically. So actually there wasn't any configuration for me to do. So let's have a look at the device quickly. Let's tap on it. It's showing what the signal quality is. So this is where I was saying, if you're using the ethernet backbone, you can enable that and you can plug in an ethernet cable. I do have an ethernet cable downstairs. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna do the uh, wireless method because um, I feel that that's probably what most people would be using. What you're getting the mesh band to work on, you're getting it to work on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 device name. You can pause the mesh point if you want, click on about, and then you can have your additional SSIDs again. So if you want to make some additional SSIDs from that mesh point, if it's pushing it further to the other side of the house, you can do if you wish to do so. Uh, locate makes the green LED flash on it reboot and support info. So this is actually running an older firmware. So what I'm going to quickly do I'm just gonna go ahead and update it. So it says new updates are available, so tap to update. So that then goes to the firmware, and it's now saying the actual access point is up to date, and the update available is for the mesh point. So we're gonna go ahead and update that, uh, install, and we'll give that a minute while that finishes off. Once we come back, we'll go ahead and start running some tests from here, and again from the two points I ran downstairs. We'll go ahead and run the first test. So 
I've done them in the same order, so this is the furthest point of the house where there's no steel, there's still bricks and studs in the way, but there's no steel on this side. And you can see I'm still getting a fairly decent connection, slightly better, which is what you'd come to expect. So I want to say almost double really um, from what we were getting before. So 134 megabits per second upload and I would expect to get somewhere near the 40 megabits per second upload speed anyway. So that was one. The next one is where the steel was. So again, the connection this side is, is a lot better. Uh, you can see I was only just getting a, a few megabits per second on the previous one. Where I was at the furthest point, I'm standing at exactly the same spot as I was previously. And you can see now I'm pushing up to 85 megabits per second. So the signal definitely increased on that side of the house. So it's definitely a lot higher and better, which is great. Upload speed, 29, 30 megabits per second. Still really good from what we get. So I actually ran one more test that you can see running at the moment. And this was right next to the mesh point. So you can see maximum download speed is 650 megabits per second. And going through the mesh access point, I'm getting 500 megabits per second at least. Um, pushing 520. Upload again, if I'm getting 520 down, I'd expect to get the maximum out of my upload. 41 megabits per second, which is really good. So there you go. You have the results there. In terms of, for me, in my scenario, I think having the additional mesh access point definitely worked out, um, especially if you have some steel and stuff in your house. Um, it definitely helps in terms of throwing that signal because we all know the Wi-Fi signals and steel do not get on. If you're in a smaller apartment, then most probably the single unit would be good enough for you. If you don't need a highly configurable network and you want something that is easy and simple to set up, gives you good speeds and Wi-Fi signal, then this is the product for you. The links to the products I've used in the video are in the description below, so feel free to check them out. If there is anything specific you wanted to look at with this setup, drop me a comment down below. A couple of things to note on this device, there's no PoE capability, and the WAN port is only a gigabit. So if you have a connection which is greater than one gig down, you won't be able to get more than that. There are a couple of other manufacturers that make similar devices. If you want to see some comparisons or even see how they work, let me know down below. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.